In this video, we'll be going in-depth on how you can create mockups for your Etsy print-on-demand business. I'll be covering quite a lot in this video, so I've added chapter markers and timestamps in the description. So feel free to jump around to which sections you're interested in, but I would recommend watching the whole video as you might learn something new. First, we'll take a look at how I create my mockups in Photoshop, and how I use automation to speed up the process and create hundreds of mockups in seconds. After that, I'll be showing you some easier ways and even some free ways on how you can create amazing mockups for your store. I'll be showing you how to create mockups from scratch. We won't be using any mockup generators here, but I will show you some of those at the end of the video. I start by listing out the product and the colors that I'll be selling. You can do this anywhere, but I like using the spreadsheet. So for this example, I'm selling the Bella Canvas 3001 and I'll be selling this in white, black, ash, heather navy and pink. This will help with the next step. I also need to create two columns here, one named Studio and one named Lifestyle. Studio is what I call basic mockups, the ones that are just a shirt on a white background. If you're using Printify or something like that, then you probably won't need to make these yourself. Lifestyle are the prettier mockups, for example, the ones where the shirt is modelled on a person, or a flat layer, for example. This is just what I call them, you can call them whatever you like. Now, what I do is I go and purchase blank mockups or stock photos for each of the colours, or just choose the best selling colours if you're listing a lot. I've been purchasing mockups for years now, so I have hundreds. But if you're just starting your store, then don't let this worry you. You can just start out with a few. You could probably find all these photos for free, but you'll have limited options, and since, and since they're free, lots of people will be using them. I'd highly recommend purchasing some. They're not super expensive, and the value they add to your store, especially on Etsy, is worth it in my opinion. Of course, you could also shoot these yourself. If you have the skill and equipment to do so, then that would be the best route. There's a few websites that I'd recommend for finding these photos. The first two being Creative Fabrica and Elements. I'm only recommending these if you already have a subscription. So if you do, go ahead and use these sites. However, the best site for mockups is actually Etsy. I get most of my images from there. So for this example, I'll search for Bella Canvas 3001 white mockup. So I'd go through, find one that I like, add it to your basket, then I'd go back to my spreadsheet, find white lifestyle, and then I'd take this off. Do this until you have a mock-up for every colour. Some shops will have deals on, like 30% off 5 mock-ups for example, so it is worth going into the shop and checking to see if they have any offers. So this shop is actually doing 300 mock-ups for $30, so it could be worth getting a bundle like this, especially if you're just starting out. Another tip, especially if you're buying model photos, is to look for mock-ups that have a shirt area mostly flat, wrinkle-free and free of any objects or hair. It just gets more complicated editing photos if there's something in the way. So let me try and find a good example and a bad example. So this one here, the shirt is pretty flat, there's not many wrinkles in it, and the hair is out of the way, so that'll be quite easy to edit in your own design. Let me try and find a bad example. This one here, there's a necklace, hair, and a jumper all in the way, unless your design is tiny. So I wouldn't recommend using something like that, because it'll, it'll get quite complicated having to edit around these elements. Now that we have our blank images, we can head into Photoshop and start editing our mockups. I'll just show you how to create one mockup first, and then we'll move on to more advanced techniques and how you can create multiple mockups in just a few clicks. I personally use this method in my own stores. It allows me to create mockups that not many other people have, and this is the method that allows the most flexibility. However, it is the most advanced. First, let's create a new file. For Etsy, I found the size of 2700 by 2025 works the best, so I'll use that here. This box here that says artboards, you want to make sure this is ticked as we'll be using those later. Now, drag in one of the photos that you've purchased or downloaded, resize it so it fits, you can crop this however you like. Now, all we need to do is add in our design. So go ahead and find the design that you want to edit in and simply drag in your artwork. Here, you have to try and match it up as best you can to the product you're actually selling. So if you're using Printify, you'd need to create the shirt in Printify first, and then create these mock-ups, and try to match the scale and placement as best you can. To be honest, you don't have to worry about this too much, just match it up the best you can. Use scale and rotate to try and match up your artwork with the photo you're using. If your photo is at a weird angle, you can always use the perspective tool, this will allow you to match it up better. Once you've got it looking good, I like to either use the blend mode, or I just simply change the opacity. I just try and make the design look like it's actually on the shirt and not just edited on top. Blend modes work well sometimes, however, I do find that the opacity works with pretty much every design. I like to set this around 
85 or 90 percent you can experiment here to find what what works best for you this the next step is optional but it does make the design look more realistic i'll go and apply a blur to this to this layer so go to filter blur and choose Gaussian Blur. I only set this something very low, and again, you might have to experiment to find out what, what works best for you. So only apply a very small amount, about 0.7 should be fine here. Make sure it applies to the layer as a smart filter. You might have to right click your layer and choose Convert to Smart Object if it doesn't automatically do this. So that's pretty much it. You can go ahead, save this, and use it on Etsy. But you would have to repeat this step for every photo and every design, which would be very time consuming. However, I did say that there was a way to speed this up and automate the process. So let me show you how to do that now. We'll be using the same file here, so don't close it. Before we do anything else, we need to select our design file, right click the layer and select relink to file. Navigate and select the same design file. This will be important later. Oh, and I should mention that this process only works if all your design files are the same size. If all your design files are different sizes, this just won't work. Okay, go over to where it says Artboard 1, click this, and these icons should appear. If not, you'll have to go over to where your Move Tool, Long Press, and select Artboard Tool. Click one of these plus icons, and this will create you a new artboard. Go ahead and create an artboard for every photo you have. Now since I have five photos, I'll need five artboards. You can also move these around for better organization. You can go ahead and rename your artboards here. Whatever name you choose here will be the name of the file that I saved. I won't bother doing it for the sake of this video. So for the next artboard, go ahead and drag in another one of your photos. However, instead of dragging in our design file from our files, we need to copy the layer from our first artboard. Go ahead and resize this to fit your photo. This is important as it will maintain the link with our design file and will also link the layers together. So later on, when we relink our artwork, the changes should be reflected across all artboards. If this doesn't make sense, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Now, you can go ahead and do the rest of your artboards using the same steps. You will only have to do this once. Generating your mockups after this will be very quick and easy. I'll speed this section up so you don't have to watch. Okay, now it should have all your artboards finished. To save all your mockups, all you need to do is go to File, Export, Export As. Make sure you select All. Click Export, choose where to save them, and press Open. This allows you to save all your artboards all at once in just a few clicks. Now that we know how to do that, to generate the next set of mockups, you simply need to right click on one of your design layers. It doesn't matter which. Select Relink to File, Navigate, and choose your next design file. It might take a few seconds depending on how many artboards you have or how fast your computer is. But that's it. If you've done everything correct, it should have placed your new design file on every artboard and you just simply go ahead and export these like I showed you earlier. This is all you now need to do to generate new mockups. Hopefully you can see how quick and easy this is and this saves you time since you're not having to export one mockup at a time. In the future, if you get more photos, you simply just need to add more artboards and repeat the process of copying over your design layer to the new artboards. However, what about the dark shirts? Some people only design one file for all colours. I always try and create a design file, one for the dark fabric and one for the light fabric. So if you do this too, all you need to do is drag in your artwork for the dark fabric onto the correct artboard. Do the same thing here, edit and match up to your shirt. And that's it. You just have to link both versions of your design file when generating mockups. So it is a little extra step in the process. However, if you just create one design for all colors, then you can ignore this step. I like to take things one step further. This is completely optional, but it does speed up the process a little bit extra. Go into your files and create a new folder. This doesn't need to be anywhere specific, and I'll, I've just called this thumbnails. Copy in one or both of your design files into here. I'll just rename mine to artwork dark and artwork light. Okay, now head back into Photoshop and relink our design layers to the files in the folder we just created. I'll go ahead and do this for both versions.
This link will be permanent. If you're using this method, then you won't have to keep relinking files after this. Now, when you create a new design, all you need to do is overwrite these files. Then you'd head back into Photoshop, wait a few seconds for it to update, and then export your new mockup. I'll show you a quick example. This design I have here in Illustrator. I simply just need to save this file as I normally would, but make sure to overwrite the file in the folder we just created. Now we need to head back into Photoshop. Photoshop should recognize that that file has updated. Wait a few seconds for it to update, and there we are. It has now placed our new design on all our artboards. Simply export this as I showed you earlier, and you've generated all your mockups in a few simple steps. I'll show you again, just show you how quick it is. Now we head back into Photoshop, wait a few seconds, and there we are, new mockup generated. And all we need to do now is save these. There's probably a few more ways that you could take to automate this further, or batch the process by using the batch tool. But this is how I prefer to do it, and it works pretty well for me. So I did say at the beginning of this video that I'll show you multiple ways of doing this. So I'm going to show you how to basically do the same thing, but instead of using Photoshop, we'll be using Canva. I'm sure you'll have heard of this. Canva is basically just an online app for basic photo editing and graphic creation. So Canva is nowhere near as, as advanced as Photoshop. So if you're using Canva, this process is much less automated and it will take more time to generate the mockups. But Canva is easy to use in Photoshop and you'll only need a free account to do this. So we'll head to Canva now. If you don't already have an account, I'll have a link in the description for you to use. A free account should work just fine for this. Go ahead and click Create Design. Then go down to Custom Size. We'll use the same size as before, 2700 by 2025. Click Create New Design. Now you'll have this screen, and this is your artboard, but Canva calls these pages. So what you'll need to do is create as many pages as you have images, very similar to what we did in Photoshop. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll just do three pages. Now drag in your first photo on the first page. Then resize this to fit the page and you can crop this however you like. Now we need to drag in our design file. Now go ahead and do the same thing as we did in Photoshop. Scale and rotate until it matches your actual item. Again, you'll need to create this shirt in Printify or similar first and then use that as a guide. To make your design look like it's actually on the shirt and not just a floating graphic, go ahead and adjust the transparency. Somewhere between 80 to 90% should work fine. You can also go ahead and add a blur here. However, when you replace the artwork, it doesn't keep the blur. You'd have to keep reapplying it for every design and every mockup that you create, which will really slow down the whole process. So I'm going to skip that in Canva. Go ahead and do this for every page that you have. I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch. Okay, now that we have every page done, to save all the mockups at once, you simply need to go to Share, Download. I'd recommend that you use JPEG, but you can also use PNG. And then this section here that says Select Pages, make sure you have all pages selected. Then click Download. This will save all your mockups as separate files that you can then upload to Etsy. However, how do we generate the next set of mockups? Unfortunately, I haven't found a way of doing this quite as well as you can in Photoshop. So the only way to do this is to first drag in your new design into your upload section. Wait a few seconds for this to upload, then all you need to do is go page by page and drag over your new design on top of the old one.
This is not quite as quick as with Photoshop, but it is still pretty quick. Then just go ahead and save it like we did before. Like before, if you do design for both the dark fabric and the light fabric, you just need to drag over the correct design when you're updating the files. So that's how you do the same thing, but in Canva. Hopefully you can see how quick and easy that is but it does take a little longer than Photoshop to generate new mockups. So what if you don't want the hassle of creating your own mockups from scratch? Well then, this is where mockup generators come in. These allow you to just upload your design file and the mockups are generated for you. The downside is that you can only generate one mockup at a time, which makes this method the most time consuming. However, it is the easiest. First, let's take a look at a service called Placeit. You've probably heard of this, but if you haven't, there's a link in the description also. It is a mostly paid for service, however, it is quite affordable and does have a few mockups available for free. So you could just go and try the free ones out first to see if you like the service. So once you're on Placeit, head over to mockups. Then for this example, I want t-shirts, so I go down to apparel, t-shirts. This will bring up thousands of mockups of t-shirts that you can use for your Etsy business. I always like to sort by new. That way you gain images that the fewest people have used. I'll go ahead and choose this one. All you need to do to generate a mock-up is click insert image, upload from your device, navigate and go and select your design file. Click upload. Once it does, this screen pops up, which allows you to scale and rotate your design. Go ahead and do that. Once you're happy with the scale and placement, simply click crop. Wait a few seconds. Here you can also change the shirt colour. Sometimes they also let you change the background colour. But here we just have shirt colour and an option to add in any other graphics. Once you're happy with your mock-up, wait for the download button to become active and then simply click it. Simply wait until it's finished processing up here and then you can click to download your image. You can then go ahead and use this on Etsy. However, if you want it to be the correct size for Etsy, you just need to click this little crop button before you download. Then go down here and type in 2700 by 2025. Go ahead and scale your image until it fits. Then you can go ahead and download your image. This image is now the perfect size to upload to Etsy. Another service very similar to Placeit is a site called Smart Mockups. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. I'll very quickly show you how this works. So once you're on the site, simply find a photo that you like, click this and upload your design file. Then click this pencil tool and scale it to match the shirt. Once you're happy, click crop and continue. Actually, I'll move that further down. Then simply click download and choose your resolution. The low resolution images are free to download and use. However, to download the high resolution versions, you do need a paid account and you would need these high resolution images to upload to Etsy. To compare the pricing, Smart Mockups starts at $9 a month. If we look at Placeit, this starts at $7.47 a month. So they are pretty similar in pricing. So there we go. Hopefully you learned something new from this video. If you did, please leave a like as it helps the channel out a lot. And if you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.